Welcome to my YouTube channel. Everything you find on my channel is presented to you completely free of charge. All I ask is that you like this video and hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. Today's demo will be a colored glass Mahi Mahi. Forty years ago, I used to make glass fish. I love fish, having lived around the ocean my entire life, surfing and fishing. The form of a fish has always appealed to me, so it was natural for me to create it in glass. They were very popular. I made so many that I got burned out on. Well, what do you know, after all these years, I've started making them again. And I have rediscovered the joy I felt when I first started making them back in the 80s. During those years of making literally thousands of fish, I learned a thing or two about them. I developed techniques for making my fish that were unique and very effective. I'll be revealing a few of my secrets to you in this video. But before we get right to it, here is a little announcement from my shameless commerce department. This t-shirt I am wearing can be yours. It is available along with other fine products like this long sleeve shirt. This hoodie. And this coffee mug, all available on my big cartel. These unique products are not available anywhere else. Order yours today. There's a link in the description below. Now, let's get started with today's demo. The fish I have chosen for today is one of my very favorites, the Mahi Mahi. Mahi Mahi is Hawaiian for very strong. It is also called a dorado, which is Spanish for golden, or here in Florida, a dolphin or a dolphin fish, which can be confusing since it is not a mammal. The mahi-mahi has vivid coloration, which I am going to represent using transparent colors in a vertical gradient. So setting up this gradient is the first thing I have to do. Since I have to assemble the colors horizontally, but the gradient is vertical, I will have to assemble the initial gather into a sphere and then switch axis before stretching it out. The initial shape is based on what I call the side profile of the fish. By shaping the gather to resemble this profile, I accomplish what I call the distribution of the glass. By that I mean that the glass is properly distributed from the beginning so that the streamlined shape of the fish will always be maintained throughout the build. I have chosen three transparent colors for this gradient, light cobalt blue, emerald green, and transparent yellow. I begin by pushing down the light cobalt into about a 20 millimeter gather. I then add roughly the same amount of emerald green, followed by a similar amount of transparent yellow. I shape the gather into a sphere, refining it with a marble mold. Then I handle up at a 90 degree angle and remove the original handle. A 
Again, I refine the shape using a marble mold. Now I add a second handle and carefully heat the center of the sphere. Once I have enough heat introduced into the sphere, I stretch it into a long oblong shape. I heat and compress one end into a blunt shape. This will be the head. Then I taper the other end to a point. This will be the tail. Now that I have the glass distributed where it needs to be and the color gradient properly set up, I need to finish shaping the fish's body. To do this, I must shape the body to conform to two other profiles, the top profile and the front profile. The top profile is similar to the side profile, but much thinner. I paddle the entire length of the fish's body, taking care to align the color gradient equally on both sides. It takes a couple of heats to get this profile right. Finally, I have to consider the front profile. This profile resembles an elongated egg. Looking at the front of the fish, it is more of a squared off shape. To change it into an egg shape, I have to heat the corners and paddle them down using sweeping motions with my paddle. It is important to use a sweeping motion to avoid unevenness. I heat and paddle each corner one at a time. Then I look at the fish from the front and make sure it is symmetrical from side to side. By shaping the fish body to conform to these three profiles, I create a fish body with the familiar streamlined shape without lumps or inconsistencies. This technique distinguished my fish from other glass artists back in the 80s. With the fish body complete, I now pose the fish by heating it up and bending it both laterally and vertically. This gives the fish a feeling of movement and life. Mahi-mahis are covered with small blue dots, so I add those using quick tiny dabs of agua azul. I use my mini torch to melt each tiny dot completely into the surface of the body. I switch my handle back to the tail of the fish and clean up the head. To 
form the mouth, I use my shears. I carefully snip the head where the mouth should be. I use my knife to shape the result so that it's symmetrical and flat on the inside top and bottom. Then I use my mini torch to round out the acute angle at the back of the mouth. I add lips to the lower jaw using Agua Azul Stringer. I use my mini torch to smooth out this addition, especially on the inside of the mouth. Then I repeat this process for the upper mouth. The gill slits are added by heating the area behind the head on each side and creating a curved line with my butter knife. The eyes will be dot stacked. I start with a dab of Agua Azul. I flatten the dab against the head. Then I add a dot of cadmium yellow to each eye. Again, I flatten the stack so the yellow spreads out evenly over the Agua Azul. A small dab of blackjack creates the iris. It is also flattened so that it spreads out a little. My dot stack should be flat against the head. Finally, a dab of clear creates a lens over each eye. I flatten this layer too so that it spreads evenly over the entire stack, and then I heat it until it contracts into a shallow dome. Once again, I switch ends. I create a strong handle attached to the forehead where it will be easy to clean up later. I remove the handle from the tail. It is time to add the fins. I start with the anal fin. The anal fin is long and narrow and will be made of transparent yellow glass. I start at the rear of the fin, adding a small bit that is drawn toward the tail at an angle. This little bit will be the first ray of the fin and serves as a base to draw the other rays on. 
I briefly heat the fish body just ahead of this bit and quickly add another small bit, wiping it up the previous ray but not over it. I leave the glass off just short of the tip. I add the next ray the same way, leaving it off at the end of the second bit, but picking it off where I believe the edge of the fin should be. In this way, I begin drawing a line that will be the outside edge of the anal fin. I add more rays, each time leaving it off to continue this line. Each additional ray is slightly longer than the previous one, which creates the gradual angular shape of the anal fin. I increase the length of each ray more dramatically as I reach the end of the fin near the center of the belly of the fish. This creates the dramatic point at the tip of this fin. With the anal fin now complete, I go back over the lower edge of the fin near the rear to complete the pointed shape at the back of the fin. It may seem like these seals are cold seals, but they are not. If I work quickly, the seals are sound, but the temperature difference leaves a distinct texture which represents the rays very well. However, the seal to the actual body of the fish is not perfectly sound, so I go back with my mini torch and smooth out where the fin meets the body to make sure there are no issues later on. Now I add the tail. The tail is added in a similar fashion, using a series of short wipes of glass. I begin with a single short pull of transparent yellow in the center of the rear of the body. Then I build on that little pull, starting with the top fin. This time, I am drawing two lines instead of one, the front and the back of the fin. I take care to draw these lines cleanly, making each addition a little shorter so the fin takes on a tapered triangular shape. I draw the tip of the fin to a point. I repeat this process for the second tail fin. Then I heat the entire fin and flatten it using my paddle and torch marber. Then I adjust the fins as necessary to make them match. Finally, I heat each half of the tail fin and draw it out slightly to replicate the gentle curve I see in my reference image. At this point, I take the time to completely restore my heat base. I can just feel the glass sighing with relief as I heat it until the entire fish has a healthy glow. The most dramatic fin of the mahi-mahi is the long dorsal fin. This fin runs from the head all the way to the tail in a long tapered shape. I add it the same way I did the anal fin, but the rays are longer and run the entire length of the back. Notice how I hold the fish so that each pull is angled down, generally in the direction of the force of gravity. This helps me to control the shape of each little pull and to leave it off to control the line of the top of the dorsal fin. Because of the curve of the fish body, I have to hold the fish in a somewhat awkward position to do this, but it's still easier to do this than to add the fin rays against the force of gravity.
I complete this fin in the same manner I did the anal fin. I clean up the back end of the fin, and then I use my mini torch to smooth the seal between the fin and the body of the fish. Four more fins to go, the pectoral fins and the gill fins. These fins have very narrow attachment points, so it's easier to build them separately and then add them to the fish. So I put the fish into the kiln and make the gill fins first. I build these fins the same way I built the tail fin, just off a punty rod. I draw a short stringer of the transparent yellow glass and then add the rays by drawing them along the previous rays. Note that I must do these pulls relatively cold to prevent them from moving while I add the next ray. Don't worry, they won't be cold seals for long. I tag a 3mm handle on the tip of the fin and burn off my original handle. Finally, I add a bit of the emerald green glass to the end where it will attach to the fish to make a thicker attachment point. Before adding this fin, I make the second fin. I compare the two fins to make sure they are the same. I retrieve the fish from the kiln and add the first gill fin right behind the gill slit. I heat the entire fin and bend it slightly toward the body so it's not so vulnerable. Once the fin is in position, I use my mini torch to polish the seal, especially behind the fin, where there is almost certainly an acute angle. Then I add the second fin the same way. Pectoral fins are slightly smaller on this fish than the gill fins, but are made and added the exact same way. The Mahi Mahi is now complete. I just have to add the clear display base. I seal the tip of the base to the belly of the fish 
just in front of the anal fin and behind the pectoral fins. I adjust the position of the fish so that it appears to be in action and so that it is balanced on the base. I remove the punty attached to the head and clean up any clear glass that is left. This allows the display stand seal on the belly to cool a little bit, so I can go in with my mini torch and clean up that seal. I touch the fish to my graphite pad to stabilize it while I polish this seal, since I have no way to bridge it. And I am finished. today folks. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something while you were at it. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Until next time, like the mug says, keep it hot. <laughs>